Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Pain User. And this is Cats Pajamas. And we have another Winner's Bracket Round 2. Well, actually, this is Game 2 for you guys. This is Rock's Kiss Brat OK versus Duck Load Raw, White Raw. And Game 1 going to White Raw. Very intense game. We have White Raw spawning as our blue Protoss in the top right position. And we have Brat OK spawning as the red Terran in the bottom left-hand corner. The map is Crevasse. And I am so excited for a game between these two on Crevasse. Oh, yeah. This is probably the largest map in the StarCraft II pool. Uh, one of the GSL maps plays out for some amazing games yeah, between good players. It's really cool because right away you have a decision to make. You know, what sort of an expansion do you want to go for and how aggressively do you want to do that? A lot of people will assume that you're going to do some sort of a quick expand build just due to the fact that this little uh, ramp right here guards two expansions. Now, the, your natural expansion that's contained inside of your base only has six mineral fields and one Vespian geyser. Um, if you decide to take the one that's a little harder to defend that's not connected uh, directly into the main, it has a full eight mineral patches and two Vespian geysers. So you'll see some players, you know, especially Zerg players, um, that won't necessarily go right for this very, very easy to defend expansion here at the top right. They'll take the more full mineral patch one and start the creep uh, collection between the two. I'm really curious to see what these players go for, though. I don't know if I've spec'd White Raw playing a Terran player on Crevasse in some time, so I this is going to be really fun. It looks like he's going yeah, for Yeah, he is a, going for a Nexus first. Yeah. I think it's much more difficult for either Terran or Protoss, though, to hold the outside expansion, um, just due to the fact, well, it's easier for Zerg to hold it because they have such a presence on the map with Speedlings, sure. and they can defend it so much easier. As Terran or Protoss, it's much more difficult to maintain that, and it looks like White Raw is going to go for the safe expansion expansion in his base. Uh, Nexus first a little bit risky, although it is diagonal cross spawn. They could not be farther apart if they tried. So, And it looks like uh, Braddock is going right for a uh, gasless fast expand of his own. So. Oh, absolutely. Yep. On this map, it's almost a given yep. that you're going to do one of those builds. Uh, you know, White Raw could have gotten a gateway first, I suppose. And it looks like he's going to try and block this command center from going up for a little bit. Braddock not microing that marine. Going to let that probe out. Uh, you yeah. never want to do that because probes are especially deadly compared to scvs and drones if you let them out of your base they can run around the map put up pylons mm -hmm. uh and you just don't want that period and he is going to head over to that zell naga tower and hold on to that for quite a while yep really critical to have that position as well because the attack paths for braddock lead past this zell naga tower unless you're going to take down the destructible rocks and go all the way around the outside you're either going through this ramp here or you're coming through um this section here off to the right so good positioning there for White Raw. He himself is going up to two gateways and a cybernetic score. It looks like his expansion is just about to finish. Braddock sees that just morphing in and finishing up as well, so he knows that that was a super, super early expansion. I'm really curious to see how he reacts to this. For the time being, it looks like the answer is to slap down three more racks. I think he might have just been doing that anyway. Four racks following up the mm -hmm. gas list is a very common build, especially on this map. Uh, he's going to power out some Marines here, and it looks like he is going to take control over that Zelnaga tower. White Raw trying to escape those Marines with the probe. It will get taken out. Those Marines will establish a position out on the map for Braddock, and he is not going to be able to do any kind of pressure here, I don't think. Uh, Warpgate just now starting to be researched. He does have three gateways uh, in production right now. He will be able to produce units a little bit more quickly after that last patch uh, before Warpgate tech is done, but he's still a little bit vulnerable right now. Yeah, absolutely, but if he gets a couple of stalkers up, he should be able to sit back and range those Marines, and uh, with good micro, just, you know, be able to knock those off at the beginning. You mentioned that, you know, Marines are very, very good against gateway units at the beginning of the game, but there is that small, tiny opening, like, right at the very, very, very beginning of the game against the unupgraded Marines, where stalkers can get in and micro and do some pretty good damage. Absolutely. Now, White Raw is going ahead and establishing a pylon north of his outside natural. There is a pylon coming up there. It looks like warp gate technology is about halfway done and he is going to be on four gates in total. However, Braddock is rallying in a serious amount of Marines for the time being. 
All right, and he is continuing to rally Marines to that point. Uh, might get cut off here, but it doesn't really matter. He has enough Marines to push this army back. It looks like White Raw is going to try and take some pod shots with his Stalkers, but uh, I think it's past that point in the game where the Stalkers are still effective against right. unupgraded Marines. There are way too many now, and wow, White Raw already has his third going down. This could get dicey. He does not have Warp Gate tech. It's about to finish right now. There are only three Stalkers out, and I wonder if Braddock is just going to run right by the third, doesn't even see it, and oh my goodness, that he had a huge opportunity right there. Yep, that could be really, really bad for him because because White Raw, he is not going to die to this push. This no, push could do a lot of damage to him. It could do economic damage to him, but he will not die to this push. And if Braddock is unaware of the presence of that third, then that is going to allow White Raw, no matter how many units he loses, to come right back into this. So White Raw is going to pick off all these Marines. Nice job of running around the Hurt uh, Stalkers there for a while. Only a couple of probes did go down, and the Marines are going to get cleared up. And let's take a look at Braddock's vision. He doesn't know about the third. Yeah, that's just too bad right there. He didn't check that. It's kind of an important thing to miss, although White Raw with the pylon in the back of the third uh, makes it very difficult for that to be spotted. A lot of players will put a pylon right in the middle in front of their third, in which uh -huh. case he definitely would have found that. And it looks like Braddock is really worried about some kind of pressure here from White Raw. I don't know why. Um... You know, obviously he didn't see the third, so that's probably some right. of the reasoning behind that. But he is taking a defensive position in a situation where I feel like he really needs to be aggressive and expand. He needs to aggressively expand or put some more pressure on the third of White Raw because White Raw really doesn't have that big of an army right now. It's all gateway units, and he's defending his third with just Look that. At that. And White Raw checks the third, sees that it's not there, and he can pick away these destructible debris, walk off, pick a unit or two off. Looks like Brannock is bringing in a few SCVs. He's just a repairing case. And as soon as he sees that defensive position and knows he can't break it, then just pull back and wait for a little while. He's got the three bases. He's know, He knows he's up in economy. And uh, he can just play the kind of sit and wait macro game that he wants to. Looks like he's getting his units forward, though. Um, I'm curious to see how long he actually attacks into this. I, I think he'll move up. I think he'll try to do damage. But I think when he sees this, he'll just kind of pull back and play the macro game. Yeah, absolutely. There's no reason for him to try and force the issue right now unless he knows he can absolutely win without a doubt. Um, I, I don't see him pushing beyond uh, those bunkers. I don't see him even trying to kill them. He's just t setting up a light contain right now. He can fall back if necessary. Meanwhile, he's teching two Colossus. One thing that White Raw should be worried about is drops right now. Um, he doesn't have any kind of drop coverage or eyes on the field to see where those dropships are coming in. Guardian Shield goes down. It looks like he is going to try and press this. Immediately pulling back. Doesn't want to have anything to do with that. Uh, Braddock unloading everything. Going heads up up here with oh, wow. White Raw's army, and I think he might be able to hold. No, those additional zealots warping in will force him back into a defensive position, and he is just getting farther and farther behind here. Yeah, I don't know about that, because, I mean, White Raw clearly, I mean, as soon as he saw it, it's just what we were talking about before. He was gonna, he was just gonna poke up, test the water, see what was there. Well, too much, gonna go ahead and run away. That's fine. No harm done. And then Braddock decided to go out and push, and White Raw just ate up that army. He had the positioning at that point then. A few more zealots do make their way in, and the more Braddock pulls out here and uh, stims himself, really overstimming himself and just losing the energy on all of those medevacs, the better positioning this is going to get for White Rod. White Rod just going to be able to pick that army apart with force fields at his will. Yeah, let's check out their infrastructures and see what is going on. We do have upgrades coming for Braddock. He has more barracks on the way, and White Raw has teched up to Colossus. He is now starting to produce those Colossus. He has two robotics facilities, adding so many gateways right now. Just now getting his forge as well. Going to start those upgrades. Maybe a little bit late. He does have range on the way for the Colossus, and once he gets these Colossus counts up, once again, Braddock going for four medevacs before before starting any kind no of Viking Vikings. production. There are zero Vikings out on the field, which is okay if he started them right now. Uh, we did have a scan there looking for a possible observer. There was none. And just now clearing that pylon out of the midfield that has been there pretty much the entire yeah. game. He has one Viking coming up, but now White Ross producing uh, two Colossi at a time. Well, there we go. Second Viking coming up at the same time now. But um, you never want you never want a Protoss opponent to be producing as many Colossi as you're producing Vikings. 
meetings at any one given point in time. That means you're falling quite significantly behind. White Rob, he is just about, or no, he just started, my, my apologies, just started Protoss Ground Weapons Level 1. He's just about to finish Extended Thermal Lance. Braddock gathering his forces in the middle here. Uh, looks like he may think about testing the water with, oh, looks like he probably got up there, saw the units, and decided to back right away with that drop. Braddock positioning his forces over here to the west of White Raw's units. But he does put down a scan, doesn't have any Vikings up with this army yet, and knows he can't engage into those three Colossi. Yeah, there's absolutely no way he can engage those Colossus right now. There's just too much there. And, ooh, we do have the Templar Archives on the way, so he is going to be getting that charge. He has double forges upgrading, chrono boosting all those upgrades right now. Two more Colossus on the way, and I feel like White Raw is going to be able to hit a timing push here right around the time charge finishes that is just going to be absolutely devastating to Braddock. Uh, you know, Braddock now building those Vikings, starting to increase that Viking count, but it might be just a tad bit late. And we do have a fourth coming up now for White Raw, choosing to take that base near the middle, not going for his characteristic secret expansions that he likes to drop. Just playing a very straightforward game right now. Everything perfectly normal except for the two Robos. He is double pumping Colossus, and wow, that hero Marine just standing between the <laughs> legs of that Colossus. I got it! Away. I got it! I don't know what he was thinking right there. I'd jump into those bushes and hide for my life. <laughs> but uh, that Colossus finally realizes there was something tickling his leg blasts that marine in the face but uh braddock does now know that white raw oh and we have some jimmy Colossus legs. dancing going over here yeah the jazz hands jimmy legs uh colossi bouncing back and forth there i'm sure white well knowing who white raw is too he's probably looking at that like <laughs> that's <laughs> <Yeah>. so funny <laughs> anyway um so let's see braddock is catching up in supply but he's catching up in supply with relatively unupgraded um low-tech units he finally does have a pretty decent viking count out but all this time white White Rock is going right back up to that charge lock composition. You know what I wish? What do you wish? I wish Braddock had some ghosts. Yeah. We have no ghosts on the field for him. He can't Braddock. invest in it. I mean, he, I mean look, it, it's really difficult for him to invest in oh, it at this certainly point. Certainly he can. I yeah. mean, he has so much income at this point. One to two ghosts would pay for themselves. Well, even I, if there are no high Yeah, I, I get the, the feeling that he expected White Rod to make his big push here earlier, though. And he's been building up forces uh, in preparation that he really didn't do any sort of harassment. Pick, picked him with that one medevac before, and he's just been waiting for this engagement. And it, it's almost like that horror, that horror film where you always expect the bad guy to come and never does it just waits and builds the suspense but here comes white right now he's gonna make his way out there's the guardian shield charge makes his way done. in and charge makes the way uh those charge lots make their way up and these marauders just standing in and taking the damage so much damage being done these vikings are going down so quickly they are taking out a number of these colossi though but it looks like all the rest of the vikings will go down these colossi just oh so powerful especially on their their one one upgrade here come the reinforcement zealots gonna work their their way in, charge immediately into the battle and start cutting things down. Braddock actually coming out maybe just about even there, although White Raw has that fourth base. Yes. His economy is absolutely raging right now, and I don't even... Oh, sending in some Zealots here just against pure Marauder. They're actually doing quite well for themselves. And how many SCVs do we have at the third of Braddock and just in total here? Braddock not even close to saturated at his third. He's down to 48 SCVs to White Raw's 76, and we continue to see this out of White Raw. He is out macroing Fun his Terran fact. opponents. Fun fact, White Raw doesn't have a unit on the field right now. He only has 76 uh, probes. So and now starting a million to million gateways. In. Yeah, that's true. He is going to be able to reinforce really quickly. It was still amusing to see him, though, just down to probes, and that was all. He's going up to a fifth base. He did just finish two Colossi at the same time. He's also going to be producing a number more units here in just a second. Good Looks Lord. like, yeah, that's ten gateways right there. Ten gateway double robo with upgrades. But uh, Braddock going to make his way in. He is going to take out this fourth. But oh, uh, no. let's see how quickly White Rock can actually get over here. Looks like Braddock, very nice job. Oh, beautiful positioning of the Vikings as well. Now the Sockers are forced to blink over. They will pick off the rest of the Vikings. Oh, before they even get a single Colossus as well. And it looks like White Rye is going to have to pull back for the moment. Eight more Zealots are being warped. And I actually think he did get one. There were three Colossi there. He got one of them. And then uh, the rest of those did manage to stay up. So 
Still not trading all that cost effectively there. White Rock going to establish his, well, I guess now it's going to be his fourth base pretty soon. And the same thing that Braddock is going to do. Braddock is still behind in workers, though, quite considerably, down by 25. His supply is, oh, he's actually up in supply a little bit. And because of the worker differential, he actually does have a much larger army. Yeah, but one problem is, is he doesn't have any Vikings on the field. He only has yes. three right now. And that's not going to be able... And there we go, another Viking joining the mix, but that's not going to be enough Correct. to combat oh, yeah. this double robo-production. He must be wondering to himself, how does he keep replenishing the Colossus count like that? Something has to be going on. Does he know about the double robo? Um, I don't Let's think he knows check. about the double robo at all. No, he doesn't. And don't forget, he's still, until he attacked him before, and uh, he had no idea when this third nexus came up. He still has no conception of when that came up. He has no idea that it's this mined out. So, you know, White Rot has been able to pull off that production for so long. He's also on 2-2 upgrades for all of his units, and that level 2 um, armor is going to do so well at protecting those vi uh, against those Viking shots with that Guardian Shield in combination as well so what do we see here white rock going to three three upgrades still producing two colossi at a time now going to a dark shrine and finishing up his fifth base so he is still finding himself in a mighty fine position almost catching up in supply and he does have the more well-rounded well upgraded Ooh, army we do have a dark shrine on the way for right white raw in the late game dark shrines can be so effective against Terran and white raw blinking his stalkers into position right there preemptively waiting for the Vikings, and man, both players hesitating right now, not really willing to commit. We do have Braddock making his way up towards the fourth right here, and it looks like he's going to stim and just go all out here. Vikings are killing the Colossus. He does pick off the low Colossus first. Second Colossus goes down immediately, but there are so many charge lots keeping his army busy right now. Oh my god, and these Colossi are getting behind as well and just dealing out so much damage. Multiple kills on all of those, racking up the kills as a matter of fact. Looks like Braddock trying to stim his way in and just pick off those Colossi before anything else, but he is not going to be able to stand up to the might of this army. He doesn't have a whole lot here to protect. Looks like he is stimming in with another round of units, with those charge lots catching up and you forcing know, all of the Marauders back. I thought Braddock was going to do really well right there. What are his upgrades? Okay, he's at 1-1. One, 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 one. Let's Against take a look three, at White three. Ross. 3-3. Three, three. Okay, that's... I, I thought he had great positioning right there. I thought his Vikings had a really good engage. Are his Vikings at 0-0? Zero, zero? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Oh I can confirm that. Oh, my goodness. Okay, that is making all of the difference in the world. Oh, oh, oh my God. Oh, 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 oh DTs. That is a special tech, special squad right there. It doesn't matter if you have detection when you have that many 3-3 three, oh three DTs. God. Look how quickly they're going to go through a this. A group of Navy SEAL DTs oh, oh, oh. head in close to finish the job and I can't imagine those Marauders lives ended well just watching all of your buddies get hacked limb from limb around you couldn't be fun and <laughs> White Raw taking that series almost more impressively than his first series in the winner's bracket yeah it actually moves him into the quarterfinals of the winner's bracket as well top eight in the winner's bracket already for him beautifully played in all of those games um, I, I gotta say that third base right in the beginning opens with a 15 nexus into a super quick third base was on three bases before seven minutes in the game totally paid off critical mistake there by Braddock to not even check for the possibility of a third before you ran his Marines in and I largely difference in the game because it came down to production at the end yeah also White Rod doing a great job with that contain not over committing preventing Braddock from getting down to the third and that eventually you know in turn it staggered Braddock's third timing, and it also staggered his fourth timing. His third and fourth bases came so late that game, yes. and he yes. also forgot about upgrades almost entirely, just sitting at 1-1 at the end of a 24-minute game. Uh, you know, Braddock not not keeping on par with the upgrades, and White Raw obviously hitting all of his chronos on mm -hmm. the forges, getting up to a super fast 3-3, and that just made his army way too effective and potent for Braddock to deal with. And that last battle really showcased the upgrade difference. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like you mentioned, Braddock did have good positioning there. He was uh, a great choosing position. the engagement on his terms, and White Rod just, just brute force pushed his way through it. So yeah. congratulations to White Rod. He does advance into winner's uh, bracket 
round number three. That is going to wrap it up for us here. If you guys have enjoyed the IPL, please do check us out. IGN.com slash IPL. You can also find us at IGN Pro League on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and Justin TV. If you've enjoyed paying these or nice casting, please really do check us out. It means a lot to us. If you check out our uh, channels and such, you can find me Twitter.com slash Cats Pajamas SC2. And you can find me at Twitter.com slash Pain So until next time, guys, peace.